Hey guys, welcome to another one of our videos. I am the Worm. This is the Proton. Uh, today we're reviewing uh, another item from Pink Mill. This is the Zeus, which is the same place he got the A7. Indeed. Which they are both basically the same device. Uh, device. This is like the um, steroid version. Yeah, it's <laughs> just slightly bigger. It's just a Pink Mill version of the A7, basically. I mean, uh, I'm gonna show you a comparison of them. One with the silver tip is the A7. The one with the black tip is the Zeus. Uh, they have both got adjustable center pins at the bottom. They both screw round and tweak a little bit. They are a little bit loose in them, I will say that. Um, but they seem to be more reliable on this than they do on this. The uh, Zeus to the A7. Um, inside, just give it a sec, guys. Uh, it is time, I Oh, inside. Inside, uh, what we do do? There you go. Right, this is the A7. And this is the Zeus. And obviously, you can see you got a bigger well in the uh, Zeus. Doesn't look too different there, but if you turn the A7 slightly towards the camera, uh, can you do the oh, hold on, hold on. There we go. The gap between them is slightly bigger. It's not much, but when you actually get into the device, it, it, it does, does feel seem. like a lot more. That little bit makes a big difference. If you hold both the posts and twist it, they do come out of the, the actual base, so you can wash it and clean underneath it, and uh, easier for re-ricking if you do, are having trouble doing it inside. So, but that's the insides, guys. As you positive, negative, done job. Um, yes. So I'm gonna um, get that on there. Yeah, you got some kind of frayed wicks all over the place. What is wrong with you? What have you done? I've already um, unscrewed it. Basically, the A7 at the minute is about 14 pound or four pennies, I believe, um, and that's about the same price as the Zeus is if the Zeus was not special at the minute, which it is. I think it's about 11 pound or four p or 94 p. 94 p. 11 pound something. Yeah. Um, so at the minute, I think, what did you pay? You paid about just under 11 just, quid, didn't you? Just over discount? 10 pound, just under 11, just under 11 sort of thing. With there or thereabouts. Code. Yeah, we did get a discount code, but uh, they're quite hard to find for Pink Mule. We will point out, you have to go, you took search Pink Mule uh, discount codes. It's kind of in, is it Swedish? I'm not sure what language it's in. It might be Spanish or so. We have no idea what this site is. We actually talked to someone who is kind of over that kind of general way, and they speak a lot of languages in other countries, so we're not really sure what it is. It's not saying that we used to. It's kind of weird writing. Copy it and paste it in, and you're ready to go. Basically, for your 10%. Yeah, 10% off of that. So it's not bad. It's worth spending five minutes looking for it to save the 10%, even if it is only a couple of quid to save 10%. Especially now. if you are going to be buying quite a few items on there. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. It's definitely worth making note of a discount code. Uh, just purely because it's going to save you money, which it did. Um, so we got a bit of money off our wick and we won't save money on that as well. We but did. this overall is it's, it's about what, two to three mil slightly wide, maybe just two it's, mil. It's about two or three mil wider than the A7, and it's about two mil taller. And I know they're very fractional differences, but it does make quite a difference when it comes to re wicking and using these things. Definitely. I mean, you can obviously hold probably only about couple three drops, or four yeah. more drops at most, but in a dripper, that is another three or four puffs. And of like good vape before you get that burnt taste. So it's a lot less time dripping. Not much, but every little helps. Enough. Sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it has got like a little. Uh, it's got a little donkey or a mule. One second. It's right. got a mule on there. Right, it's sure. Black. It's got a pink mule, pink mule written underneath it, but that has come off through a bit of washing. So. Um, we um the, the drip tip on that does feel um slightly ceramic. It may be yeah, ceramic. we're not percent one hundred percent, but we feel it's ceramic. Mm. Uh, with uh, like it's it's kind of got a slight um bobbly texture to it, but it's so fine. It's like near enough unregisterable, but it is definitely there when you've got your lips around it, sort of thing. So it it it's not uncomfortable by any means. No, Don't get no, me wrong. It's, it's just. It's just got a slight texture to it, like um. For me, I mean, to be honest with you, for me, it's slightly uncomfortable. That's because I tend to clamp on my teeth. I tend to do that and then get it in my lips. I don't sit on my teeth around it, but when I first put it in my mouth, I do tend to clamp on my teeth, um, and that is a bit like tink. Um, but it's not news to people. If you watch our videos regularly, I always have preferred the stainless steel drip tips, and I always will. I just find them more comfortable to use all round. I'm currently on a 1.9 uh, ohm out of here, guys. I'm running at about 4.4 volts. I'm just going to re-drip this because it is dry. In, whilst we're like whilst we're doing that, um, like I say, we've run the A7 and the Zeus back to back. We both use both. In terms of vape, they're comparable. They're very they're very same. similar. You can't really tell much of the difference apart from the fact that that'll take a few more drops and it's slightly easier to rewick. And at the minute, it's cheaper. So kind of, you, if you're looking at these two, without the issues that we'll get into with this, because we are going to do a little update on the A7 after we finish with the Zeus, um, I would definitely purchase that one. Um, if I 
knew now what I knew if I knew then what I knew now, I would now buy that one instead anyway. So, I mean, obviously, was just off those two balls there, guys, you can see how much favor is coming off of this. I mean, it all, obviously will depend on your juice and down, your down, yeah, and obviously, you're calling yourself sort of thing. If you use a um, standard um, wicks because you do get three wicks with it, they're not bad, but they're not good either. They're not great. Definitely recommend wicking your own. Well, they've got some 1.45 mil wick on um, pink mill, which is spot on. They also do the and stuff as well. And we use a bit of 32 gauge cam foil with some 1.4 mil wick, two pieces of wick, wrap a 4 5 wrap coil, and it seems to do the job spectacularly well compared to the um, every initial coils. The initial coils are still good, but they're not. They're not all that. No, I definitely recommend wicking your own on these guys. Um, I mean, as we said in the A7, um, these are basically they can chase the tower that Baron. They are very, very good. Fact, when you get them very wicked, good. right, you've got to wick them right. But to be honest, it's not hard in these to wick it right. Is we it? do recommend using two bits of uh, 1.45, or you can probably push two mil. But if you go for three, we found that it just seems to bog it up a bit, and the core doesn't fire properly because the wits seems to be a little touching bit there. Yeah, I mean. Not really sure what's going on there, but we recommend racking, uh, wicking a two lengths of a uh, two mil to 1.45 wick and uh, just ramming it in there sort of thing. Uh, I have found that if you, because um, you'll notice it goes over the hole on this um, inside. Oh, I just re this. Oh, never mind. Uh, I'm going to zoom in again, mate. Uh, I'm going to sh I'm gonna stand up for this bit because it's just quick. Uh, there we go. You can see like my coil is there and it kind of goes over the hole which is just inside there. You can see it there, just literally the coil is right over the top of that. But as you notice, I haven't tried wrapping it around the post, which is pretty much how it comes. I wrap up to the post and then go back on itself just so it wicks a lot better because if you put it behind that post, it choke is going to choke it a little bit. So To be honest, exactly the same what I do with the A7. I tried to go around the post once and it didn't seem to work so perfectly. Wicking it like that in both of these devices seems to work really well. Yeah. Um, to be honest, it's, it's a very good little dripping out. I mean, we said the same game seven. The reviews are fairly similar, apart from the fact that that doesn't have a couple of the issues that this one has. I do want to point out the issues we're going to get into haven't been an issue for the last couple of days. But when, when they, when they have, have been an issue, they have been an issue. But they seem so. to do it for a day, and then you'll get a day off, and then you'll have yeah. two days of it, then like a week of no issues, and then a week of issues. So it's it, up and down. It all it. boils down to that adjustable centre pin, which they both got. It just seems to be a bit more persistent in that zoom than it does in this A7. Um, not entirely sure why it might be a dodgy one that I've got. Like I say, I, I mean, I was looking at buying that zoo, so I like the spirals around it, but I wanted this drip tip, and we thought uh, up until the moment that, that Worm actually took delivery of it, that they were exactly the same size. Yeah, just a different drip tip, I think. Yeah, so with a little we, bit of uh, styling and the mule. They're a little bit bigger, though, so I definitely put my money there. And to be honest with you, for like 11 quid plus a couple of packs of wick, which is about two quid ago, a pack of cantho and delivery, about 24, 25 quid, and you, it's very good. I want to say on this, um, I am using. Not overly high voltage on this, but it is a warm vape of this. It's not mm. a cool vape because obviously that air goes it, it, it's that definitely cool. a metal body there. So it's going to heat up and it's going to keep your vapor warm as it's going traveling up it. So it is a warmer vape than other devices like the DDA and yeah, my Baron. I mean, sort of I mean, the coils do seem to run slightly hotter in this, which I quite like actually. This is a lovely warm vape. It's not mm. too hot, but it's just nice. The body can get hot on both. Um, as we said in the A7 video, and the setup is the same. The coil is sitting directly above the air hole as well, I've just shown you. So obviously that warm, that that's where your air you're putting in is going straight past that lovely warm coil, straight inside your face. Yeah. Um, so it's very, very good. Um, Should we get onto a little five-point thing with this? I know yeah, we've done I mean, it with the A7, but I think we can do it with this too. It's slightly different, isn't it? I mean, looks-wise, I think it's slightly better than the A7. I, I really do. I mean, that little bit of design, Plus, I prefer the, the black tip tip in the top. I mean, it looks even better on my Bavari with the black tip because it's got like the chrome in the middle and then the Goes back to the black, but even on the uh, Bamo, it looks really, really good. Um, looks wise for me, oh, sorry, you haven't given your mark again. Nine, it is a really nice looking device. It is a nine, I'll, I can't give it more than nine because it doesn't look as good as other trippers that I've got. So, yeah, it's a nine, it's, it's, it's a really good looking device. So, looks from whoops, it's uh, stuff about looks for me out of the box. I prefer the A7 purely because of that drip tip. Well, I prefer the body of that one without a shadow of a doubt, but I do prefer this drip tip. I like the metal drips for me. Which is why you bought it. Which is exactly why I bought it. Um, looks for me, it's an eight, but, and it is a but, if you do this, take that out and put that in, that for me is a ten. That's as simple as it is. That drip tip makes... We will show you that that drip tip has got like uh, the line thing on it as well, so... That drip tip for me makes all of the difference. Um, so looks for me, I think the A7 is better out of the box, but using your own drip tip, that is better. So that's kind of where I am with that. Um, usability for the worm. Usability is it's just the same as any other dripper, really. The wicking is a little bit more fiddly, but not to the extent of like it's going to frustrate you. It's going to go in quite easy. 
usually gonna have a little bit more fiddly with getting mainly the second wiring because it does go over the air hole so you've got to kind of bend the wire and pull it through and try and keep your coil straight that is the only real difference in this and usability and uh, <clears throat> all that when you get to that sort of side but actually just using the device as it is out of the box with the wick already in there you drip it and you go it's as simple as that you drip you're gone you, you, you're vaping at really nice at like you said temperatures because it does heat up a little bit quickly for some reason we don't know why maybe it's to do with the setup inside which you can take out and look at um but yeah uh, usability is a 10 out of the box i think for me usability was a nine for the a7 um this is the same but slightly more room to re-wick so it makes it a nine and a half a 10. it's um simple as that it's just the same as the a7 but the advantage of having a little bit more room to work with a little bit more room to put a bit more wick into which holds a little bit more slightly bigger air not air sorry slightly bigger well to drip a little bit more into so it's just the a7 but fractionally better so that makes it for me a nine and a half ten there you go i mean maintenance again is pretty much the coil and washing out so the coil like i said is it's kind of to do with usability when you get into like actually putting the wick in but maintenance is also a part of the coil as well so Usability, it's, it's still really easy. It's not like a hard dripping device at all. I mean, cleaning it out is literally, except for losing the screws, which I'm assuming when you wash it, you're going to tighten up anyway. We do. Yeah, we, we do. I mean, it just makes sense to us. Um, you can take it all apart, and it's like pretty much three pieces. You take the top off. Well, you take the drip tip off. That's one. Take that top off. That's two. And then you un you can unscrew the actual insides to make it four. So you've got a total of four pieces, but, but you you've got the three bottom to... ten. You can wash it out with your stand hole. Yes, I mean, you you can. Don't, the only reason we tend to take the whole thing apart is if we, I mean, not so much him, but for me, when I'm trying to ram dual coils in there, I'll take the whole bottom assembly apart just because I can then try and fit it back in. Um, but apart from that, you've not really got any reason to take that bottom piece out. No, I mean, so, so for three parts, including the drip tip, so two parts. So maintenance is really it's like cleaning what side ten. It's easy. It's a piece of it's, it's a it's a doddle. Uh, it's a piece of doddle. It's a piece of doddle. It's a piece of, it's a piece of doddle. Um, but uh, when it gets the rewicking, it is slightly harder than like the DDA and some of the easier drippers out there. But it's not much harder. So it's still like a nine nine point five. It's really not that hard. It's just keeping that coil together when like evenly spaced when you put in that second wiring because you've got to kind of bend it round and through the hole and then put it tight. And then straighten up, and so you're done. It's the same as in the A7 as well. You do get the little screwdriver with it, the little mm. tin. Everything's the same. Um, Worm is looking for his tin at now. As now the screwdriver's on top of the clear box. If that's what you're looking for. But same as A7 um, and the DDR, where it's got the holes in the centre post. You get exactly the same little tin with exactly the same coils, and exactly the same screwdriver. It's just this device and that device are slightly different. So usually for me, that top of that screwdriver does actually spin it in your palm, and you screw your screws down. For me, me, it's no harder than the A7, and the same for uh, the Worm, but. If you're using a DDA and you're not too up on this, it might be slightly harder, but it isn't by much. It's it's, it's only a fraction. I mean, it's it's just, you haven't got the first time, the time you do it, you may so. like go, huh? But the second time you're gonna be like, psh, psh, done job. Mm. Usability for me, same as A7. It's just exactly the same as A7. It's easy to use. If anything slightly easier, so it's not unusable, but you're on maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Monge. Um, yeah, honestly, honestly. Monge. Um, yeah, no, use, uh, maintenance for me, sorry. Really? I hope I shut your mouth. <laughs> maintenance for me um, is the same as they said. It's very easy to watch out. It's very easy to wick. I'm going to punch this <laughs> dick in the face. Um, it's very easy to wick um, and it's slightly easier than the A7. So, so it's 9.5 for me for that. Flavor of vapor. Flavor of vapor of it is exactly as the A7. There is no real difference. Once you get this to the peak coil, it's going to be the same. It's like a 9.5 vapor amount. It's 10. It's, it's comparable to like the Baron, the, the amount of vapor you get. The flavor is slightly dropped, but it's only like 9.5. It is literally on the towels of that Baron, so it's a little bit more work, but it is not. It's not bad at all. To be no. honest with you, um, I'll agree with that. I mean, vapor is a 10. You don't anything that, that produces this much vapor. I mean, Worm will show you now. You've just seen what my A7 can do. Is is Zeus is exactly the same. He just plumes and plumes of vapor, uh, more than you're ever going to get from a cigarette, no matter how big your lungs are. It's um it's very good for vapor ten flavor for me exactly the same as the A seven on the tabs of the Baron for what it is or for, in general it's a nine point five but I do want to say quickly that this is a seventy thirty PG mix in here so the vapor isn't as strong as it could be um for its price though it's a ten all day long it's a ten you're it's, doing contract overall no I haven't gone overall but I'm just saying for the I mean mainly the flavor than anything else um but the, for the price of the flavor it's same as in the A ten because I wanted to sing this up same as I did this yeah, a little if you bit. Look at is it the most wide? Baron's over there, mate. Where? Under the flies. Yeah. Uh, you think about this is 40 quid worth of uh, 
dripper without a tip, I'd like to point out. This is 11 quid ish on the moment why it's on discount with a tip, and it's 9.5, 10. There is, I mean, that's a bit easier because you've got your replacement coils, but then it can work out a little bit more expensive because you've got your replacement coils. We're having, we're finding re-wicking these, depending on what kind of abuse you put them through. I, I abuse my stuff a little bit more than, than Worm does, so I tend to re-wick every sort of three or four days. I've re-wicked this three times in the last day, but that's because I was dual coiling and single coiling. Then I had a mix up with duties, so I wanted to change it fresh. Um, but realistically, that lasts you a week, doesn't it? Coil in there. Oh yeah, easily. I so, mean, literally, I the one I, before I cleaned this out and uh, re-wick this. Um, I must have put about 15 different juices for it. I did rinse them under the tap a few times, not every time. I did sometimes just uh, go through the juice, but I did uh, wash this out a few times, just put it under, took it out, good blow through, next juice was ready to flow. And uh, this was, I think it went for about a week and a half the first time I wicked it. And that was the initial wicking I did, because the, the coil come through it, I dripped it just to try it. It wasn't great, so I put my hand straight in it. It was literally like a five second job. Like literally I tried it, it wasn't as great as his A7, so I thought I'd get to try my own done job. Um, overall for me on this uh, device, in, for its price, it's a 10. It really is a 10. Compared to other drippers out there, it's still like a 9.9 because it is chasing the heels of that Baron. I mean, all right, if you do want to pay a bit more for the Baron or the, uh, what's the other one? It's the Spiral. The Spiral, the killer. Yeah. Um, it's literally honest. It's right on its ass. So why would you go for that if you didn't have something that, kind of stylized with it sort of thing. I bought it because it wanted to go with my Favari, but this I'm happy with on my uh, Vamo that I take out all the time. To be honest with you though, that and the Spiral are very similar sized as well. Um, and looks wise, they're not dissimilar. I no. mean, the build quality of the Spiral will be slightly better for sure. Um, and you haven't got the adjustable center pin issue, we'll call it. Um, but yeah, overall for me, it's a 9.5. For the price, it's a straight out 10, same as 87 was. It's a very, very, very good dripper. It's got all the benefits of this without the slightly dodgier centre pin and the fact you've got a little bit more room to move. So we gave the 87 a 10, now 9.5, this 10. Um, it's very, very good. I think we kind of... We've, we've kind of finished off on this, so we're going to go on to the A7 update, which is mainly going to be about one thing, really, isn't it? It, it does boil down... Uh, to the set, adjustable centre pin. Okay, now from the beginning, in the A7 video, I said leave it at about two mil, screw it in, nice and tight, and that makes a perfect connection every time, and it does, until it pushes your centre pin through your Vamo. Yeah. Which was a bit of tinkering, Vamo come apart, you mentioned the videos, it's gone black, it's now brass again, don't even ask why. <laughs> um, <laughs> another video. Yeah, no, maybe another time, I think we've already done it in one video, but I can't yeah. remember one. Um, that was the first issue, okay. Now, the adjustment center pin has been working fine for the last two days, absolutely fine. Put it on and it reads the same kind of 1.9 this was, it's now 2.2, but I can change with juice and a bit of bedding. So that's not a problem. I did re this recently, it's only about an hour ago I re yeah. this. Um, but there are times where I put this center pin in and it's 9.9 ohms on the Vamo, but still firing. So it says to me it's registering over 10.0 ohms, 10 ohms, sorry. But then when you push your trigger at four volts, it's firing like a 1.6 coil. It's just, it's very strange. And then it'll be 8.4, then it'll be bloody 2.2. It just goes up and down and the up. The thing is, it's still getting the power to the device. It's just, for some reason, I'm not reading those ohms properly. I mean, the, the center pin in this is just as loose as that, if not looser. Because I can literally put a screwdriver up there and just pull it out, and it just which comes is, through the thread. Which is not a good thing. No. We're not a good thing. But That's it hasn't fallen out yet. No, it's not fallen out. It's not fallen out. When I've washed it, I've powered like a cool, cold water through this. And nothing, it didn't fall out, it didn't even budge. I do want to point out though, it didn't used to do that. Worm was sticking his screwdriver through his air hole and going, Look, I can adjust it like this. And I think that may have something to do with why it's now a bit loose in their threads. Yes. User error. But it's not actually become a problem. No, it's, so, it's, it's still, every time I put this on the device, as long as I make sure it's screwed up as much as I can get it at the time, it still reads the correct image every single time. I think that's slightly down for the A7. I think the, the 510 connection are on the outside the same. On the inside, I think that is very fractionally wider, but it's just yes. fractionally enough that your setup can actually fit in between the connection. With this, it won't. So you need to have that fire, the, um, adjustment center pin slightly yeah, beyond the So clutch. I can show that uh, on the camera. Would you really? The, seat, the uh, center pin on this and then how wide this is. Have you got your one as well? Uh, long. Uh, I mean, if... Oh. Yeah, if you, oh, sorry guys, I'm going to stand up again. I'm going to try and whisper a bit so it's not shining down the camera and get this quite close. Uh, if you can see that center pin down there with the thing, and if you look at, this is the A7 on the far side, guys. If you look at the very base of that, uh, you can see that mine just is got, it's slightly thinner, so it, it can fit around that center post quite nicely. Whereas the A7 
it's got a slightly thicker bottom bit there so it just just and seems to a, hit a less gap between um the adjustable center pin and the actual uh wall of the 510 internal connection yeah, so, so you can screw this all the way up screw it all the way up and it as long as your um adjustable center pin is right up it won't be a problem whereas yeah. this you have to have that uh, center pin flush or slightly beyond flush and that has been causing some issues like i say we, i was washing it out loads yesterday and re-wicking it and so on and so forth not a problem once but then i do have my days where it is a problem and it's a pain in the arse a proper pain literally you can sit there for 20 minutes adjusting this thing going <laughs> I mean, and that is in that basis. So. I mean, we put it back on now. It's just gone 3.5 ohms, now 2.3. This is all to do with center pin, but it will not change the way it fires. Now, I know on this, it's about a 1.9 ohm coil, so the reading is slightly off anyway, but it's not affecting the performance. And it's reading 2.3, 2.3, 2.3. But there are times we'll just go 2.3, 3.5, 4.9, 6.8, 4.1. It's just up and down like a yo yo, but still fires like the true resistance of the coil. It's yeah. very, very strange and incredibly random. It is a massive downside to this, especially if, like me, you dual coil a lot and you want to run it on a mechanical mod, but you want to know your ohms beforehand just to make sure you don't kill yourself. It can be wrong. It can be wrong dramatically. So take that into account. I mean, definitely now, my recommendation with my money, again, I would buy that. You did buy that basically because he preferred the look of it and we wanted to see what the difference was. Um, so we haven't bought that. Sorry, I bought this one. And um, I'm not unhappy with the A7 by any means. It's a lovely performing dripper. But if we was buying again, or if I was buying again, I'd buy this. I know that a lot of the guys, uh, mine, Rover and Dan, um, Dan was using DDAs on our recommendation, saw the A7 video, was like, and then um, bought a Zeus. I'm guessing maybe because it was a little bit cheaper. Probably. And that was, you, you made the right choice there, Dan. You definitely did. Um, and mine, Rover, I believe, has also got the Zeus. But as we said in the video, either one you're going to be satisfied with is just slightly less problems with that. Performance-wise, they're the same. It's just that slightly bigger and slightly easier to use, so obviously. In, in our opinion, slightly better, um, especially since it's going to cost you three quid less. The drip tip on it works fine. If you really can't bear having that drip tip and you want a stainless one, then buy a stainless one and get that one. It's only a few quid, or buy an Andy one. Just buy something that you like the look of. I would recommend. If you prefer them, you've probably already got one or two lying around anyway, so just use the ones you've already got. Put this in the drawer as an emergency drip tip, mm. basically. It's not a bad drip tip, I just don't like the way it looks on it. But if you had a black battery, if you were running like a black spinner, I'd probably bang it. Oh, um, just that swirl thing I was doing there. If you do over drip it, if you swirl it, the juice goes around the edge and kind of goes into the outer wicks. Give it a quick pull, and you're pretty much good to go. Yeah, basically, it's the same as I did on the A7. I, I, I gave it a swirl, and you've you kind of picked it up since, since it's only with this device, really. But you give it a little swirl or that device, the liquid that's excess obviously hits the sidewall. You have a few vapes, and it's not it's not flooded at all. And then by the time you vaporize that, it's ready to take what's on the sidewall, and it does quite nicely. It's a little trick we've developed. Oh. So, Dan, Mind Rover, if you do have a fuzz slightly, give it a quick ring. And then puff, 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 and you should be all right. Um, now, I can't actually remember what I was going to say. <laughs> you no, let's not. just look at him. Do he remembers? Oh, I ain't going to remember. Really? Right? I ain't got a clue. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but you will understand the Ruby thing in a few videos' time. Probably. Um, <laughs> we've got. Um, I think we've got to the point now where we've discussed the main key features of these two devices. In comparison, they're, they're the same, just. The Zeus is better, so obviously take that into account. The A7s are being knocked down by half a point each one, apart from flavour and flavour because they're parallel. Um, everything else um, is slightly easier and better with that Zeus, barring I like this drip tip. So, would we recommend the A7 still? Yes. yes. Would I recommend the Zeus more? Most yes. definitely. Is the Zeus cheaper? Yes. And that is robbed of money. And like we said, the Zeus is like 11 quid. Couple of packs of wicks, so four meters a wick, ten meters a can of and delivery. Take off your discount code. You're looking just over twenty quid. The wick um, we're using at the moment, like in all our devices that we're using wick on, is from Pink Mule. It's lovely stuff. We are going to be trying some from some UK sites, just so eventually we will be able to give you a comparison on them. So that is upcoming as well. So keep your eyes out for that if you are looking out for silica. Uh, it will be coming in one of our probably our update videos, Indeed. probably in about a week or so. Maybe so, yeah. Yeah. But um, but for twenty quid. You really can't go wrong. You really can't go wrong. That, some wicks and camphor, you're going to be happy for quite a few months. Uh, and even if you're re-wicking re every other day, you're still only looking at about four inches, three inches, four inches of wick and a few inches of camphor each time. If you've got four metres of one and ten metres of the other, you're good to go for quite some, some time. Um, I mean, well, like I say, if you do treat it right and give it a little rinse every now and then, you, I, I had this running for a week and a half. On one coil, and it was rinsed a lot. It was rinsed. I eventually only had to try because I'd rinsed it so much. I had um, 
unfortunately pulled out a little bit of wicking when I was uh, washing it. I went a little bit rough hazard on it. And um, it basically it grew a hot spot because I pulled out too much wick. And that was the only reason I had tried to be, uh, we wicked it because the wick was still doing its job. Oh, yeah, the full so it, it, it may have, I may have got another couple of days out of that. Depends on how you're using it. If you're not washing that and using one juice on it, it probably is going to do you two weeks. Yeah. Because I was using this all day at work, then at home, on both devices, and both my uh, Bama and my Pavari. So Lovely stuff. Um, and to be honest with you, me and, me and both still have quite a soft spot for these dribblers because they are beautifully simple. We to love get our right. dribblers. I mean, especially these and like the, I mean, the AGI dripper. Um, and we've got some more on the way as well, which we will um, definitely be doing videos on. But drippers for us are just, now they just like are the Nova, really simple for us. They, yeah, they are. Drippers I mean, are the new Novas for us. They just, just, I don't know. I can't get away from the fact that no matter what I do with a dripper, I pick it up, I sling a coil in it. I can't really go wrong, and it just works. Um, they are beautifully simple, and they do perform amazingly well. I can definitely, definitely, when I used to watch videos of people dripping and go, oh, it seems like a lot of bag road, I can definitely see why they did it, and it's obviously now why we do it as well. Not for everyone, but a lot of people who haven't tried it, if you do give it a go, I promise you, you're definitely going to enjoy it. The few people we've recommended and got to go and buy some have generally bought a couple of them, yeah. and they've loved it so much, they're looking to buy one of these, because they went from the DDA, which we recommended, and now they've all sort of ordered one of these, so it's definitely, definitely good stuff. Um, I think we've kind of come to the end of the Zeus A7 uh, fiasco. And a, um, yeah, it's an update. Yeah, video an update -ish. Ish. Um, I do want to take a few brief seconds just quickly to say hello and thank you to a few of our regular subscribers and regular viewers of Head Dog, Dan, um, Steve, Adam. Robbie. I was going to say Adam, <laughs> Mind Rover, uh, and also Ribbit. Mar Ribbit and Marty. Whilst we're talking about Ribbit, we do want, I was literally getting onto that in a second, um, but Marty as well, we actually spoke to Marty earlier on, he's having some trouble with DIY mixing, hopefully we've helped you out there, we did an hour long Skype video with him, um, so hello mate, um, and hello to everyone else obviously as well, thank you for watching, um, hit the like button if you don't mind, it does help us out a little bit. Um, whilst we're talking about Ribbit, uh, he's one of our new subscribers, a French man, um, we actually opened up the YouTube today to a, a message saying um, something along the lines of, I've made a montage slash montage intro of um, you and the worm, or, or us two basically, like doing what we do, doing the videos and all this kind of stuff. Um, and we he, he put it onto YouTube for us and linked it for us to have to look at. Um, it is now the intro that you watched on this video and the Previous API. Two and the RSST updates as well. Um, and we just want to say a massive thank you for that because we think it's absolutely epic. We yeah, love that I mean, intro, it's brilliant. It really is cool. The smoke effect you got on that was, it was just, it was exactly what we were looking for. Mm. So we didn't ask him to do this. We didn't ask him to. Literally we woke up to a random message, like a personal message to my, YouTube, or our YouTube account and uh, just boom, hey, I've done this. And we it, was cracking up. Well, well honestly, it was, it was literally woke up. We was pissing ourselves. Um, we watched that four or five times straight away. Easily, yeah, easily. And we just thought it was amazing that he'd taken the time and obviously quite a lot of effort. I know it's only 10 seconds of footage, guys. And if you do render and mess around with footage, you know what that is. Um, but the intros and stuff that you do put in for 10 seconds, it does take quite a bit of work. It does. It's, it's a lot um, of tweaking. And it's quite frustrating at times as well. And he sifted through a lot of our videos and just literally made an intro of it. And we want to say a massive, massive heartfelt thank you for Even that. Even more so for jumping on Skype with us and sending us the raw file as well mm -hmm. so we can render it with it there and uh, instead of just backing it on YouTube and using it as our intro. So if you do like that new intro, definitely give it a thumbs up just so uh, Rivet can see that his work was definitely uh, appreciated because it definitely, definitely was by us. We really, really do appreciate that. It was, it was fantastic. We do love the intro. Um, I think we're basically there, aren't we? Yeah, we're done on this we one. We are pretty much there. If you if you haven't already checked Pink Mule out, feel free to do so. We'll link it in the description for you just so you can um, have a butchers and see what you've got. Because they've got a lot of nice stuff. It's where I bought uh, that mechanical mod and, front and stuff from. And we, we both bought these drivers from. They're brilliant, brilliant company. And delivery is very, very uh, swift, seeing as it comes from overseas. Yeah, it's about three to four days. Three to four days, um, which is bang on, really. We can't really ask more when it's coming from another country. So brilliant stuff. Um, if you want to follow us on Twitter, our Twitter uh, profile is at Worm Big N Proton, um, and that, that will obviously uh, allow you to see our random posts. Uh, recently, it's more me random posting than Worm, just because I get bored, um, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Maybe because I'm sitting there rendering bloody videos. Possibly, I do that too. Um, <laughs> he types out the name ever. I sit there and render you. Fucking whore! Um, <laughs> if you want to follow, <laughs> if you want to follow us on Facebook, our Facebook is it is worm and which is the symbol for and which is the ampersand proton 
Dash Chasing the Perfect Vape. Come on in, you can join our Facebook group as well. All of our videos are directly linked to our Twitter, so if you're following us on Twitter, you'll see whenever we upload something new. If not, you'll see it on YouTube, um, which is wicked. Uh, I think we're pretty much done there, guys. So for now, I have been Mr. Proton. This has been The Worm. Catch you soon, guys.